some got a bunch of. How much black powder we got? Now we're going to wander around and find out what else we need here. Where are we going to, uh, let's, let's get an angle, a dangle here. Are we actually going to aim at something? How about that cow over there? Well, actually, I'm going to put it behind <laughs> the can. We'll turn it over that way. How far will it go to the A-frame? Well, at least that. At least that. You ready? Ready as I can get. Is this called fire in the hole here? Well. We'll see if we can follow it. I'm not sure. Firing the hole pretty quick here, anyway. How about your butane lighter? Not sure where it'll hit. We'll just play guesswork here. You ready? It'll take about 10 seconds for the fuse, sir. There she goes. Boom! Right in the middle of the tree. Or right behind it, I couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, shoot. It's just that song got up in the air, boy. <laughs> and this, of course, is how we go chase the cannonball. Not being too silly, want to walk too far. Next one we shoot, we'll shoot it out in the open where you can see it. Yeah, it'd be yeah. fun to see it hit. That's the hard part is finding the dumb cannonball. I'm afraid it went right in the middle of it. Going out in the pucky brush in Texas isn't the, isn't the best thing in the world. Yeah, we'll see if he comes back with it. Yeah, that Put it out three quarters, give it a little more. Three quarter inch powder chamber? Yeah. A little tin can launcher. So it'll hold 120 grains. This shot is for those of you who think you just can't make anything out of anything. This would be a tiller with an electric motor on it. Probably hasn't run in 10 years, but that's what it was. Uncle Dale makes about anything. We're going to go out in just a second and look at a homemade pecan shucker. Okay, coming up now is a machine that we think is going to haul some pecans. We're not real sure yet. Are you talking to yourself? Yeah, I'm, ta I'm talking to myself. Ah, oh, there's Glenda. Close up, close up. Oh, please. <laughs> You're right, you broke my camera. <laughs> and there's George, nope. Glenda's husband. I just got a bunch of dirt in my eye. Well, we'll turn this thing on in a minute and see just what it does. Theory being here, you get the belts on the wheel, power to the motor. You pour the pecans down into here, down underneath that wheel. Wheel turns, crushes the holes. Pecans run down there and go into a bucket. The holes fall on the ground where there's already a bunch down there. And Dale and George get this going. We'll see what happens here. Small belts around there. Hey, you're on camera, George. Look healthy. Behave yourself. Now take the stacks of pecans there. We're going to dump them in there. Ready? Yep. Dump them in there. Then that wheel's going to crush them just enough to knock the husk off. Okay. And one mistake, sack George and all goes in there. There we go. That's what I thought. That belt won't do it. There we go. We'll go in there. Well, we'll have to tighten that belt. We'll be back in a minute here. All right, now we're in production here. Now I'm going in there. Okay. Little basket there feeds them down into the hopper. Fall out on the ground. Pretty soon I'll figure out where the pecan is. We don't know yet. Doing it from the other. I don't know if this is that. They go down there into that auger where they're dropping in. That's the end of the hopper. Then I throw out the chute and then I fill up the cockpit. Uh, Fire knocks 
basket to assist the husk out. When they come down the uh, kind of the conveyor there. And up the hill. We're going to see if we can see the mortar round hit. We're kind of guessing where it's going to go. So far, it's not a, not quite. Fire in a hole. Fire in a hole. Got about two seconds. Am I safe here? Three seconds. Here we go. Whack! Got to hit just to the right edge of the road in the darn bushes. Oh, oh he got a good sight on it. Oh, well, this is the only problem we found with the mortar. Uh, we can't keep track of the mortar rounds. Got some juice cans with. There he's got it. Got some juice cans with cement in it. On the glide scales. Don't know if this will turn out right or not. Uh, we missed the big show. We're going to try to get a picture of the horses and, and uh, the semis and stuff like that. Let's turn around here real quick. Zip! Let's turn the semis. And there's the other one over there where they load the load the horses and everything in too. Now I'll shut it down. See what they do next. Trying this on twilight to see how it works. It should be more exposed. Get a shot of them hoods there. They're back in the cleaning the horse. They got a little bit of Being an experimental shot, we're using twilight for the shadow and backlight for the sun back there. Let's see how it turns out. We've got pictures of pictures of pictures and all that stuff. <laughs> Everybody's getting everybody here. <laughs> got you. Want to take that home, Glenda? Follows me home, can I keep it? <laughs> All you feed it. I would. <laughs> and pick up after it. <laughs> Glenda the horse lover. Hi there. Hey, there's Debbie. Turn around and say hi. <laughs> oh, you got the 
This is a motel, isn't it? This is a courthouse in Albany, Texas. Uh, Kevin, Jeff, we were here for the Fandangle years ago. It's just a neat old looking building. Show you the clock tower here. Let you see that's the bell up in the old bell tower. Back on out a little bit. Pretty neat. I think I saw George walking around there somewhere. Well, I lost him. Oh, well. Oh, there he is. There's old Jorge taking a picture of us. Yeah, we'll go check out the museum pretty quick. Uh, this is Albany, Texas. Most of the town is made up as uh, false fronts, old western town. Unfortunately, it was closed on Sunday, the day we came through. So we're going to come back again. We got some neat looking old stores there. Kind of a neat little place. Zip on the back. Zip. One modern store there. A couple more down there. Anyway. We'll visit the courthouse now. Weatherford, that's been us up front, of course. Going into Weatherford, going to do some sightseeing. This is Dennis, riding through the Palapeno Hills on the way back from Rutherford, Texas. Wave high. Wave high. I can't tell. This is Dennis doing we're not sure what up in Palatina Hills in Texas. Checking out the scenery, I guess. Zigzagging, riding with one hand, all kinds of fancy stuff.
Uncle Dale's garden area. Birch and Dale are gonna put some barbed wire electric wire, keep the deer out. Dale says the deer can take the sweet potato buds out as fast as he can plant them in there. They're gonna ride on the old four-wheeler and run some wire around there. Yeah, it's about 8.30 in the morning, it's already about 85, so we're getting an early start. We'll watch them here for a second, watch them feed the wire out. This is walking when you can ride, I guess. Around they go. Put the fence charger on there and zap those little deer as he's Here's a shot for Dave Watson. He won't believe Dennis is shooting a jam-o-matic here. I hardly believe it myself. This is our little shooting range that uh, Dennis and George built up before I got here. Got a nice little bench there, rock solid, made out of steel. And over here against the old rock bank, got uh, three or four targets set up. The old shooting seas. And I'm going to zoom in here and try something. Yeah, I can't quite pull it out. Yeah, I got to go to manual focus here or something. But, uh, yeah, let's see what I'm grouping. That's our little shooting range. Well, I'll swing around here real quick. Black. Four to the right, one slightly left. That's me. Down yonder against the fence line, about 130 yards, we've got the other bench set up. We'll play around with that a little bit later. These guys have been busy. There's the other steel bench. Get real ambitious, we're going to go way out there about 170 yards and see what we can do. Pan shot just panning right from the range just to look at the property. I'll zoom out a bit here. Here's one of the big fields uh, where he farms. Out beyond those trees is the Clear Fork branch of the Brazos River. Nice place to go have picnics, things like that. <clears throat> the roads kind of go all over the place. Down in there against that far tree line where we saw the wild hogs the other day, hoping to get another look. Zoom over here and there's another big field that he works. I'm not sure how many acres. I'll go for a little extra backlight here on this shot. There's one of the big fields. You don't see that much flat land around here much. I expect he worked hard to get 80, 90 acres of flat land. And stands over here. And more pucky brush and sage brush. And the main house sits up there kind of on a little bit of a rise. For some reason, my autofocus decided to cut out. I'll, there we go. And that's about what the place looks like. That's Dennis with his uh, Civil War Maynard 50 caliber. A little booger is accurate, the rifle. Shaking all over the place, too. Black powder, got a brass cartridge that fires with a percussion cap, puts the flame through a hole in the back of the brass cartridge. Single shot, break action, got a lever to open and close it. Put the bullet in, put the cap on, pull the hammer back, and you're ready. <laughs> Went in the black, didn't you? Did it? Pretty good little shooting bench they built here for us. Shoots good though. Yeah. That's the most accurate rifle practically I got. Almost had you in the... <laughs> in the what? <laughs> Flashing off of here. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that flash. Okay? That's, yeah, that's fine. It's a new birdie replica here. 
five Colt. Everyone in the black except one, I jerked it just slight low, Mike. All right. Okay, Mike's getting ready to try my 1866 Yellow Boy. Loading up. Looking good. And this is how we spent one afternoon playing with a starter on the cat. Everybody got good and greasy, frustrated, hot. And I think we're about to hear it turn over. I mean, that'll blow up. You gonna stand that close? You gonna stand you gonna stand that close? I'm trusted. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll see if it smokes this time. It's right down there above the Like we messed up again. Battery disconnected. Battery hooked up. What would they do without me? <laughs> yeah, you're getting that on tape. And I'm getting that on tape, yeah. find out. I told you I had to tell them how to do it. Favorite mode of transportation here. Little four-wheeler. Dave Dale must have a hundred thousand miles in that thing. Yeah, let's go back to the cat. See if it'll go. Well, we're gonna need jumper cables. I'll give up on this, I guess. Just kind of an overall view of the ranch uh, house itself, Dale Marsh's place. That's uh, Dennis's trailer. He came up in this year. And his little motorcycle. Our, our car, and there's a ranch. Dale built that about 1948, as I recall. Been added on to a couple times. The fence, if I can get a close up here, is uh, old well drilling heads. Probably used on his place. There's the old three headed sharp tooth uh, well drilling heads. Lots of bird houses. He likes having birds around singing and yakking. You can hear them in the background. Back out here. That's a garage he built several years ago for a long time. He just parked outside and got into a 150 degree car when it was time to go somewhere. That's one of his little orchard areas there around the shop. There's, that's the old main shop right there. That's all there was to it at one time, the old wood part back in there. Extended it out with some metal part here. And this year he put on this cover so he can drive through and get his big equipment in there. Thousands of different tools in there. Great big lathes and milling machines, drill presses. You name it, it's in there somewhere. And this is just the area outside where he calls his material yard. And Marshall calls it the junkyard. 
all those old equipment things he's made and built and glommed on to. There's an old rake there, it looks like. Just kind of taking this to use up the last of the film. That's just an A, oops, that's just an A-frame for pulling out engines or whatever. A lot of this junk I'd like to have, I'll tell you. This little wheel there is the uh, wheels off an oil well pump. That's the ones that spin around as the pump arm goes up and down. Probably been there 20 years. Nothing changes much around here. Just kind of sits and gathers dust till it's used again or rusts into nothing. There's a trailer he built for hauling metal. And there's a trailer he built for hauling who knows what. He's got 17 trailers around here, I think. And out yonder is kind of the one of the bone yards. There's an old pickup truck up on the up on the jacks. There's four, five, six cars spread out there in the old old flatland yard there. Well, that's kind of a circular tour of the of the main area here. This is the gravel road you come up. And around there and over the hill over there and goes out to the main highway. I think I'll close this roll of film off now. Let me whip around here. Zip. Get one last shot or two of the house. Step over this way a little bit. That bedroom there was added on years later. That's their master bedroom, just kind of a big open area. Two bedroom, one bath, other than that, then they added the third bedroom. So I think that'll do it for this roll of film.